and Part 3 is an analytical discussion. It's important to understand the criteria on which you will be tested in the IELTS exam. First, we consider the criteria of fluency and coherence. This is one of four criteria on which you will be tested. We'll cover the other three in later videos. Fluency and coherence refer to your ability to speak at length, including organizing ideas logically and appropriately signposting. It also refers to your ability to express and justify opinions and to discuss and speculate about issues without long pauses or repetition of the same words. Signposting is the use of words or phrases that indicate the direction of your thoughts. We will give you some examples of this in a moment. Many students try memorizing large portions of speech to repeat during the speaking test, but this can add unnecessary stress and sound unnatural. We don't recommend this approach. Here are a few tips to improve your speaking test performance. As you are speaking about a topic, build on your point of view by adding a few details. For example, if the question is, what do you do? Rather than responding with, I am a teacher, you might expand this to, I have been a high school mathematics teacher in New York for over five years. For part two of the test, use the bullet points on the task card to help you structure your long turn and make notes in the one minute that's given using key words. In part three particularly, it is important to develop your answers and to speak at length. You can do this by thinking of reasons, effects, comparisons, supporting examples, and personal experience. Just make sure you are signposting what you say. For example, discussing excessive TV watching, you might mention reasons, increasing numbers of TV channels compared to a generation ago, and the popularity of TV characters. Effects, increasing obesity levels, eyesight problems, and other health issues. Experience, my nephew watches nothing except cartoons. He will not study. Here are some examples of signposting for part three of the test. Compare contrast. In my view, there are two main differences. Responding to a point. Yes, I agree because, or I'm not sure I agree with that. You see, speculating on the future. I think we'll probably see a lot of, or maybe there'll be more, or it's unlikely that we will have. Practice is the key to increasing your fluency. There are no shortcuts. Practice using English in everyday communication as much as you can. Record yourself talking about different subjects. Then play it back and listen for linking expressions, hesitation, words you may be repeating, and times when your speech is slow. This will help improve your fluency. The assessment criteria is the only thing on which you will be tested. You will not be assessed on your appearance, body language while speaking in the exam, or your creative ideas. IELTS examiners are very consistent with their application of the IELTS assessment criteria. It is the same assessment given everywhere in the country and everywhere in the world. Papers are a good resource. These can also help you keep up on the vocabulary of current affairs. Group new vocabulary into related subjects and learn these together, rather than making long lists of unrelated words. For example, make a list of words about sports. Using mind maps often helps with this. Learn more synonyms. These are words or expressions which have a similar meaning. Knowledge of synonyms will help with all parts of the IELTS test. Try using a thesaurus. Make small word cards with the word written on one side of the card and the translation and an example sentence on the other side. You can then test yourself. Practice is the key. Not to memorize, but to practice discussing different topics, weaving in the vocabulary you have learned. Research shows practice improves test scores.
Don't give up if you can't find the right word. Keep trying to explain what you mean, even if it takes a little longer. This is called paraphrasing. You will get credit for this. IELTS speaking tests include general, everyday topics. Specialist knowledge isn't expected. The topics are relevant to all of the 135 countries in which IELTS is used. The range of grammar includes using a variety of complex structures. These are sentences with multiple bits of information. Contrast that to separate, simple sentences with a single piece of information. For example, just beside the station was a stadium which was built in the 19th century and where games are now held every weekend. It isn't expected that candidates are 100% accurate. However, control is important. The Band 7 definition for grammatical range and accuracy says, frequently produces error-free sentences, though some grammatical mistakes persist. It's not just the number of grammatical mistakes, but also how seriously these mistakes block communication. To improve your grammar, take these steps. Be prepared. Make sure that you know the speaking test format and what type of questions to expect in each section. Many tasks in Part 2 of the IELTS speaking test relate to the past, so you most likely use past tenses. Ensure you know the past tenses of common verbs. Some questions in Part 3 ask you to speculate about the future, so use the right tenses in the answers to reflect this. Look out for the British Council's Johnny Grammar apps and videos that can help explain the commonly used tenses for you. Practice. Particularly think about the tenses you use. Ensure these relate to the questions. If the question asked is, what did you do at work today? The main word here is did, which is in the past tense, so your answer should be in the past tense too. For example, today I wrote a business brief. Don't worry if you realize you've made a mistake. It's okay to correct yourself. Record yourself speaking and listen to identify errors. IELTS results range from band scores of 1 to 9. However, there are not specific questions for different band scores, and there can't be as the score isn't assigned until the end of the speaking test. Also, remember there are no quotas for IELTS band scores. Each individual is scored on their... Confuse this. For example, euphemism. Word stress. Stressing the wrong syllable in a word is a frequent error. For instance, it should be mistake, democracy. Word stress can be confusing when it changes with different parts of a word family. For instance, photograph, photography, photographic. Sentence stress. For instance, the way that some words in a sentence are emphasized or slightly louder. For example, if I were you, I'd go by bus. Intonation. The pitch of your voice changing as you talk. Monotone intonation is typical of someone who has memorized long responses. This may result in lower test scores. Chunking. Talking in a rhythm which delivers chunks of words with short silences in between. Good public speakers often use this skill. To improve your pronunciation, we recommend these steps. The first step is to find out how English intonation, sentence stress, and rhythm differ from your native language. Ensure you understand the effect of sentence stress and intonation on meaning. Then practice using these in different ways. Refer to a dictionary to confirm the correct word stress if you are unsure. Listening to a variety of authentic English sources will help you become familiar with a range of pronunciation features. For instance, listen to the BBC Radio or the Voice of America in whatever subjects interest you. Even if you're not listening closely, Having the radio or television on in the background can help attune you 
to the rhythm and intonation of another language. Don't rush when you speak. That's a common mistake. You might skip sounds or words. It's better to speak clearly. Recording yourself can be very useful. Try to apply what you've learned about the different features of pronunciation in English. Chunking is a particular skill you can develop by recording yourself. The face-to-face -face nature of the IELTS speaking test encourages you to develop the skills you will need to interact successfully with English speakers.